just to show you about you know, the kind of place Mishmi is all about. You know, when I'm talking about birds, uh, my bird checklist doesn't even have names of crows or you know, uh, the kites, which are so common in our urban landscapes. So, uh, you know, uh, so welcome uh, all of you to this uh, joyride. And let's start. Uh, Dushar, can you please uh, go on to uh, the first slide? So, people, we are going to talk about, you know, when, when we go to Mishmi, our base camp remains, or the first town where we reach and approach Mishmi is Rowing. Rowing is home to beautiful, you know, flood plains, which are also which also happen to be grasslands okay so black breasted parrot bill marsh babbler uh, you know these are some of the very rare birds which are found in uh, you know rowing grassland so we'll talk about the uh, you know rowing grasslands i'll also talk to you uh, you know what has been the experience you know while reaching to rowing uh, we'll talk about the rowing experiences the market the town how it is all about then uh, you know how we go about in Mishmi, the culture, the food, you know, uh, some birding notes that I'll share with you. And, uh, you know, so uh, I'll also share with you the best seasons to go in Mishmi. Okay. So let's start. Tushar, can you please uh, move on to next? Yeah. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Siddharth. Most of uh, you know me as Sid the Birder on Twitter, uh, Sid the Birder on Instagram. Uh, and Siddharth Sharma in my, you know, uh, normal working space. Uh, so, you know, in my heart, you know, I'm in love with birds and I'm in love with birds. Many of them I have never seen, even never heard of them, not, not to heard of them as in of their calls, but not even heard of them in their names. I don't even know what their names are, but I'm in love with birds and, and, you know, uh, this whiskered Yuina tells you all about it, why I am in love with birds. This has been clicked in Vishmi itself. Uh, so uh, this is all about me uh, and the magic of birds. So let's get started. Tushar, next please. So uh, the rowing experience, as I said to you that, you know, rowing is home to beautiful grasslands. These are typically elephant grass, you know, so they are so tall that, you know, uh, even a five feet, eight inch guy can get, uh, you know, uh, covered by these grasses. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a few videos also that how it is so easy to get lost in these grasslands. Okay. Uh, so Tushar, please. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the elephant grass. You know, this this handsome gentleman happens to be your presenter today, the, your host today, which has joined you late. Okay, so uh, no, uh, no way handsome, no way handsome. I object on that. All right. So this is uh, you know Samayak and uh, Sanjeev, my uh, you know two participants who were uh, able to you know uh, you know uh, move around in these grasslands. One of the participants, Mr. Jayant, was a senior citizen, so he could not go. So, uh, you know, this is uh, the kind of dense grasslands, you know, which we have seen in rowing. And it is so difficult to move around these grasslands, you know, uh, taking care of your camera, taking care of your gear, listening to the bird calls, you know, avoiding a possible, you know, python, uh, nearby your feet can be anywhere because these are very prime habitats for pythons uh, so so you know uh, but it's so uh, you know i would say so healing in nature because when you are there you are there you know this is what we call in the moment so you remain there in the moment you are just about you know you you are about to track uh, the black breasted parrot bill one of the synergies of attraction in these grasslands uh, you are about to track uh, marsh babbler. You are hearing their calls. So, you know, uh, this is about, you know, uh, the grasslands of Mishmi. And these are all Brahmaputra floodplains. So as soon as you cross the four and a half kilometer Bhurben Hazarika Bridge, you know, which is also known as the Dola Sadia Bridge on the Brahmaputra. As soon as you cross this bridge and the floodplains, uh, you know, so uh, this, is, uh, this is the most, uh, you know, beautiful part of, these grasslands because uh, streams and small rivulets uh, pass through them and you have to pass through these rivulets to go to another patch 
and as soon as you go into that patch uh, the parrot bill comes out crosses the river flying and comes back so you know this is the fun of it and i'm proud to say that we have missed parrot bill this time when we went we just got a glimpse of it and uh, we could not click it uh, but uh, you know i i leave this video to you you know just to enjoy the grasslands so now uh, the town one of the things that i noticed about rowing as a town or northeast as a whole is the cleanliness amazingly beautiful market uh, lots of cleanliness football grounds all around small houses no buildings uh, you know eastern himalayan ranges in the backdrop beautiful blue skies uh, in rowing market oranges are very famous of rowing you know uh and trust me i have never had such oranges in my entire life and this is the packaging in which they give you you know uh it's a bamboo small bamboo you know uh basket i would say uh, no polythin needed you can carry this you know this is a pack of 20 odd oranges which costed me 100 bucks so uh this is about rowing you know one of the most beautiful small towns you will ever come across uh tushar can we please uh, move on to next slide so uh, as soon as we start you know traveling to mishmi uh, from rowing we have to start our day really early when i am saying really early uh, you know it means around 4:30 to 5 am in the morning because this being eastern side of the india and you 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 are in arunachal which happens to be the eastern most point of india sun rises pretty quickly and sun sets also pretty quickly so around 4:35 the day ends uh, so you have to leave pretty early uh, there are lot of stops in route you know different elevations in route so the first stop remains the sali lake uh, the second stop is the tiwari gaon the third stop is the 30 km stop uh, and you know what the fourth stop there are so many stops in mishmi that you will stop the count of the stops you know so you stop counting the stops so what we used to do is we used to climb up in our car or in our innova for next 5 odd kilometers or 3 odd kilometers get down and then do birding downhill so it becomes easy for to us for walk as well as to spot the birds because you are at a higher elevation and birds are at a lower elevation then so sali lake is a beautiful place you know there is a elevated platform you know on the lake from which you have to go down if you stand on this platform trust me you will see such gorgeous birds you know so here it is the hair crested drongo or the spangled drongo as we call it uh, on erythrinia flowers or the coral flowers uh, the maroon oriole on the coral flowers so this is one of the most beautiful experience that you will ever have and these birds are you know sali lake is a reasonably protected environment so the the birds here are pretty much habitual of humans so they don't run away from you they they come pretty close to you and you can watch and observe them so sali lake happens to be one of the most beautiful destinations uh, i would like to invite you to have a look of these forests now this is uh, you know one of the bridges where we stop uh, to you know spot foxtails uh, so you can have the look of these forests tushar uh, next is a video yeah how tall the trees are you can see a lot of hollock trees you know uh, the trees on which uh, the name uh, hollock gibbon has been named most of the trees you will find in mishmi since since it being an evergreen forest have vines on it you know so most of the trees are homes to vines so there is a lot of undergrowth there is a lot of upper growth the canopy is really really dense to spot a bird you need a lot of patience uh, so the first stop as i said uh, is sali uh, lake second is the tiwari gaon now uh, tiwari gaon happens to be a hamlet of precisely eight homes it has only eight homes one home is uh, you know serves you good tea uh, beer if you want uh, maggi uh, you know uh, packed fish so so you you get to have these small snacks munching kind of Uh, you know uh, things and one of the most beautiful things about such roadside 
you know, tea stalls in Arunachal, is they offer you fire, you know, which is much needed from the, uh, you know, the, the winter or, or the chill around uh, the atmosphere because you are constantly uh, under the cloud there. Okay, so uh, the first beauty that we see or saw around Tevari Gao happens to be this common green magpie. Uh, gave us a good, beautiful show of good five minutes, you know. So uh, it was truly amazing to see this bird in such an open uh, environment. Uh, so, sir, next, yeah. So, sir, can I ask something? Is the common yeah. green magpie really common by, I mean, as its name says over there? Because I have never seen that very commonly. And any bird which is common in it is not common. So is it really common over there? Uh, I managed to, in, in span of five days, I managed to see it four times. So uh, over there, I would say not if very common, but yes, not very rare also. So, so, so uh, you can expect good things. Yes, yes. And uh, the results are in front of you. So uh, common green magpie uh, happens to be a crow family bird. You know, it's, it happens to be a crowbit. So uh, a beautiful crowbit, you know, one must have to say. Then we came across these silver-eared messias, uh, perhaps the most beautiful small birds in India, uh, you know, silver-eared messiah. And one thing, Namdhapa, you know, when I traveled to Namdhapa, I had to look out for silver-eared messiah for three days, you know, trekking 12 kilometers in leech-infested forests. Here I saw silver-eared messias at least five times, at least five times, uh, that too, you know, on road without any struggles. So, uh, you know, uh, this is the magic of uh, Mishmi Hills for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Tiwari Gaon happens to be on road only. Okay, so uh, here it is, the beautiful Sibia on, again, uh, Erythrenia flowers. You know, uh, your, your rufous fronted bush robin. Uh, again, on road, we saw it. One thing uh, Mishmi teaches you is how to approach birds. And, you know, you have to be really patient. If you are patient and if you are silent, trust me, birds will come up. But if you happen to, you know, you if you have this itch to go close to bird, to get full frame, to get very close shots, trust me, you will lose entire thing. But if you stay close, you know, stay silent, if you stay very, very steady at one place trust me birds will come and touch you trust me i'm not you know overly stating anything there have been instances where i had to move back to click few birds because they were so close so i'll, I'll show you those photographs also uh, when we move forward so these are the you know uh, the beautiful ones now we'll talk about the rare one birds uh, which we saw uh, your uh, you know rufus headed parrot bill one of the most rare birds in India. Uh, now, to track this bird, first you need to find good bamboo forests, okay, uh, because it feeds on bamboo only. Second, uh, these birds remain very, very silent. They don't have much of a call, but yes, white-hooded babblers accompany them all of the time, and babblers being babblers, they are quite noisy. So you have to first track down the white-hooded babblers, and along the company comes the complementary package of, uh, you know, uh, rufous-headed uh, parrot bill. So uh, very small, tiny little bird, very delicate bird, you know, uh, not delicate in terms of the physical attributes, but delicate in terms of getting disturbed. So it's a huge flock also. So one of the challenges which you face in Mishmi is to click, which one to click. So if you happen to see the birds, there will be so many birds around that you know you will be confused whether to eat uh, the cashew or whether to go for the resin so you know loads of birds around you <coughs> then we also saw this pin striped uh, tit babbler this is the white hooded babbler which i was talking about you know uh, which is the harbinger of you know parrot bills so usually i accompanies them in mixed flocks uh, first time uh, can you please go back to share first time i saw white tailed natach uh, not that. Uh, next slide, please, Tushar. Now, uh, white-tailed natach, uh, I have seen many a times in Munsiari. I have seen it many a times in Himachal. But white-tailed natach, first time I saw white-tailed natach, why it is called as white-tailed natach? Because only in museum diagnosis, you can see the white tail, you know, right now, which you are seeing. The first time, 
it came so close to me that i could see its white tail which is underneath its tail okay so uh, i was in all awe because uh, ever since i read salim ali's books you know it always said that you can only see it in museum diagnosis okay so here it is white tail natach in front of you uh, then you know uh, yellow throated fulveta uh, you know rusty wing uh, fulveta for you these are all mishmi endemics so high very rare birds you will only find them in sikkim higher altitudes and mishmi so uh, and these birds came so close to us so so close to us that we have to move back we have to move back and one of the things we didn't had to venture too much inside the forest all these birds were seen on road all of these birds were seen on road none of the birds we had to venture inside the forest we have to climb a hill or we have to go down the hill nothing like this every bird which i am showing you here in this presentation has been seen in wide open road spaces along the roads so uh, you know these fulvetas now uh, back please tushar now if if i talk about these fulvetas you know these fulvetas are you know something between babblers and wobblers so neither they are uh, babblers nor they are uh, wobblers uh, so you know something in mid they eat uh, you know flowers they eat uh, the pollen of the flowers they eat insects you know and the best part about them is they live in a flock of 10 to 12 so if they are around you trust me one or two will come so close to you to get you good photographs so uh, these are the two fulvetas that we got uh, the second one is also known as the manipur fulveta okay but more than manipur you can see them in uh, mishmi arunachal ushar next please now uh, you know the signature species of uh, mishmi uh, you know the the barwing uh, you know uh, the barwings okay so uh, you you have got you know rusty wing uh, barwing a uh, streak throated bowing both of them are in front of you the restiving uh, bowing is on the right side uh, on the left side is the streak throated uh, bowing we his missed hori uh, throated bowing also it came pretty close but we could not click it so uh, again bowings are a flock birds so you will see at least 10 to 12 all together so you know again you may feel it like you know this is so close i can click them there are so many of the birds but trust me on this uh, it's a challenge which one to click and which one to leave okay and and they give full shows to you okay uh, so uh, both the bowings of uh, mishmi tushar please next uh, again one more bowing for you and the most beautiful bird or one of the birds which are seen you know uh, in mishmi pretty regularly is the beautiful natach for you so no points in guessing why it is called as beautiful natach wow that's very nice yeah so uh, and uh, i always enjoy seeing nataches doing things because you know these are the birds which never are still you know they are either climbing up the tree going down the tree you know moving horizontally upside horizontal downside horizontal getting into the nooks and crevices of the trees so so they are never still uh, but that's the fun about them you know because uh, then you can see them uh, you know you can admire their agility <coughs> they can easily be called as the spider man of avian world can easily be because you know they can climb down the trees also not like just like woodpecker they will climb up the tree they can climb down the trees also and with such an ease they can do this that you know you feel in awe of these birds these are very very beautiful birds uh, beautiful natach for you uh, tushar next now uh, one of the most beautiful warblers of india is black faced warbler and happens to be in abundance in mishmi okay so on the left is the black faced warbler one of the most beautiful warblers of india uh, we saw it at least uh, you know 10 times uh, in 5 days in mishmi uh, white you know yellow cheek tit again and a very rare bird 
uh, exclusively found in very limited pockets of northeast so uh, this this yellow cheek uh, tit also happens to be one of the you know uh, nice birds that we came along with uh, tushar next please now uh, let's come to the endemics of uh, vishmi uh, this bird is so endemic that it is known as mishmi ren babbler uh, so it is it is so 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 endemic to mishmi that it is known as mishmi ren babbler uh, it is also known as rusty throated ren babbler uh, found also in certain patches of lava but mostly found in mishmi okay so uh, evolution of this bird has been very 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 diff different and uh, this bird again ensures that you get complete show you know so it will come it will sit in front of you it will spread its wings it will do the call then it will again hop and there is a sequence of you know uh, th th there is a series of sequence attached to this bird so you can actually predict from which stone this bird will hop on to which branch then then it will hop on to which wood log then again it will repeat this so there is you know predictable repeated uh, repeatability in this uh, you know behavior of this bird but yes needs to be spotted through ears only first you have to spot through ears uh, because more often than not it's pretty vocal like most of the wren babblers this bird is pretty vocal uh, you have to hear their calls and then go ahead you know and spot them so mishmi wren babbler for you tushar next please ah uh, one of my favorite birds you know the chevron breasted babbler this bird happens to be very very secretive so much secretive that we don't even know the nesting behavior of uh, you know uh, chevron breasted babblers uh, they are flock birds uh, we saw 12 watt birds together doing things that to around road uh, and you know you just look at the texture of this bird you know uh, i only can think of one bird which comes very close to them you know is spotted elachura in terms of the you know the pattern on their frontal portions a uh, very beautiful bird to be you know uh, to to have on you know uh, your tour or to see them any time so and and one of the best thing is they are ground dwellers so you will not see them up in the tree you have to bend your knees to get eye level shots of these birds but again uh, nothing comes easy in mishmi uh, these are very fast movers okay and they are very very fast movers keeps on you know uh, changing their directions so so one time this bird is facing me when i am clicking this add you know in next second it will be facing opposite direction of me so it keeps on moving you know literally from one side to another side so pretty difficult bird to click Uh, but we got lucky in Vishmi, and here uh, you go. I tried to click four birds together. This has been shot at two hundred mm, you know, focal lens distance to get four chevron breasted babbler or you know wedge-tailed uh, babblers in one frame. Happens to be one so, of the most rare uh, sites. Sir, yeah. Uh, yeah. One question: uh, What lens would you actually recommend uh, in Vishmi? because the the words are really small see uh, mishmi you know uh, the strength of mishmi is clouds but that is the biggest challenge of mishmi as well because you know the lighting conditions are never superior never ever you know in terms of iso you are never below 1000 iso so i would always recommend you know because birds are coming pretty close to you i would recommend any lens you know like canon 2.8 400 mm you know is uh, good enough to click uh, you know i use nikon uh, during this tour thanks to tushar uh, 200 500 but i got decent results but yes you know uh, you you are always above iso 1600 iso 2000 in such conditions you are you are always on struggling on the iso front Okay, so basically, you also need a good body to support that much iso yes. because of the lighting conditions. Yes. Okay. Yes, and shutter speed is also something you can't compromise because if you compromise on shutter speed, it will not come. These birds are so fast movers that you know you will struggle to get a shot of them 
you know, without a shutter speed of let's say 800, one by 800, one by 1000. So, you know, the ISO is first challenge, shutter, shutter is the next challenge. Okay. I hope uh, I've answered. Yeah. Now, uh, I'd like to talk so about a few experiences. Yeah. So this is Arvind, yeah, just a follow-up question. Do you think people like me or amateurs still using point and should have any chance with these birds? <laughs> Can you, can you repeat this? So I was asking, uh, amateurs like me who are still using point and shoot, do, do we have any chance with these birds? Uh, uh, one of my tour participants, Samayak, had 300 mm lens and he got pretty good pictures. Why? Because distance is not an issue in Mishmi. Distance okay. is not at all an issue in Mishmi. What the issue is, so you will never see a bird which is, you know, 200 meters away from you. Every bird you will see in Mishmi will be hardly, you know, uh, 2 meters, 5 meters, that kind of distance I am talking about. So even 55, 250 is a good lens to take in Mishmi. The only struggle is your body should support higher source. See, okay. see, one more question. So, uh, and Sorry. Yeah, Thank you. On, on the similar line as to is there a uh, season which is better or is the time of the day which is better where you can get, get a good light because see my lens is 6.3 so i think going to 2.8 or 4 is like out of question obviously the camera support a better uh, iso but uh, from a f-stop uh, do, do you feel handicapped with that the season starts from feb okay uh, it, it lasts still, you know, uh, even I'm getting updates from Mishmi that birds are getting seen. But April end is the, you know, uh, is preferably we should stop because then the proper monsoons arrive there. Without even monsoons, you know, in February, we lost almost two days to rains. Wow. Okay. So clouds are the strength of Mishmi. Clouds are the, sh you know, uh, because of clouds, so many birds are there and because of clouds only you can't see them. Okay, so uh, Feb is a good time and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what all we saw in Feb and, and you know, so we, we uh, on en route to Mishmi, we saw black neck crane, uh, you know, uh, one of the lifers for me, one of the most, you know, rare birds in India, uh, can be only seen in Ladakh, but being a passage migrant, you know, we saw it. Uh, when we reached Mayodia Pass, you know, the highest peak uh, point of Mishmi, uh, we saw ruddy shell ducks migrating back. So we are at a height of 2600 meters. Okay. And above us, two kilometers above us, are ruddy shell ducks which are flying back to Tibet, flying back to China. Okay. We saw, uh, you know, many passage migrants like short eared, you know, short eared owl. We saw short-eared owl in Mishmi. It was taking rest as a passage migrant. So this place, if you go in Feb, you know, holds a lot of treasures in terms of passage migrants. But yes, April is the best season to cover all the endemics of Mishmi. Okay. Uh, so I hope Neeraj sir, this answers. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. But June to October, strictly avoidable strictly avoidable okay uh, next sure. please to share yeah so uh, i was talking about the cleanliness uh, now this is a food joint which i was talking about you know you see these bamboo mats uh, as walls you see bamboo mats as flooring uh, you know uh, so you know and uh, delicious food you will get tushar if you can play it again yeah see how clean this place is uh, sunlight is coming through. Uh, there is a small, you know, uh, place where you can, you know, warm yourself through fire. Uh, there is a place where you can keep your raincoat. Everything is so, so sorted out. And you know what? Uh, my participants over there are clicking dark fronted rose finch as well as Eurasian woodcock when I was taking this video. So, <laughs> so this happens to be beautiful birding spots as well. Okay, so so uh, again, one of the thing, see the movement of clouds in Mishmi now. How clouds come from nowhere.
clouds comes from nowhere you know and all of a sudden you found you you know you find that you know you 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 are amidst rain it and it's raining so on a single day uh, you know within 5 days we were wearing t-shirts and you know lowers uh, while doing birding next day uh, i had to take out my you know uh, jacket uh, which is minus 10 resistant uh, next day we were wearing raincoats so this is the kind of weather that you get you know you have to be prepared for all the three weathers there okay so uh, this is uh, you know uh, this is the picture uh, which you know like covid vaccine you know if you are getting yourself uh, vaccinated you have to click uh, picture to get the antibodies activated so if you are going to mishmi you have to click this photograph to show that you have you know been to mishmi so this is my idea pass the highest peak of mishmi uh, one of the things that i i would like to tell you you know uh, about the mishmi tribe uh, you know which i learned you know uh, i i spoke with quite a few of them uh, most of them are you know not religious from any of the angles they believe in spirituality they believe in spirits so they feel like that river has a spirit they feel like trees have a spirit bamboo has a spirit and these spirits can harm you or can benefit you as well so they they are spiritual in terms of you know pretty uh, spiritual nature in terms of nature uh not in terms of any gods or any idols or any uh, rule book to go by uh if you happen to be a tantric in mishmi tribe right you, you happen to be a karodpati okay so uh, pardon me oh okay so uh a few things you know their their love for cleanliness uh you know their love for pork meat and they cook it really well you know uh, my apologies to those who don't like it uh, but but you know you must go and taste uh, these foods and also uh, one point that i would like to you know highlight over here is these hills are getting polluted these hills are getting polluted because of uh, not much because of plastic but because of beer cans uh, beer beer can beer can cans happens to be one of the biggest pollutants uh because locals carry it with them uh locals are also carrying uh, you know air guns with them uh in throughout mishmi uh of late there has been a campaign uh, wherein you know uh, people have started surrendering their air guns uh i hope this augurs well for birds because those air guns are mostly used for hunting birds smaller birds okay and uh, one of the experiences that i would like to share with you of a bird which we which we missed uh you know uh, was blight stragopan so we saw blight stragopan but we could not click it but we waited around one and a half hour 90 minute without talking to each other stand still on the road you know just in wait of this bird to come down we heard calls and uh, the calls of these birds are like you know uh, like a crying baby so you know uh, these calls are so easy easy to identify but to spot this bird becomes a really really big challenge we could uh, spot the leg of this bird and i can proudly say to you uh, this has been my failure uh, but uh, you know uh, next time uh, i promise myself that we'll not come back without uh, you know blight stragopan and uh, this is it ladies and gentlemen without you know consuming much of time uh, we open this space uh, for q and a uh, do feel free to ask questions if you have any observations questions or your inputs please feel free to uh, you know contribute so see that two questions uh, from my yes. side one is i think uh, this altitude that you are at higher altitude Uh, did anybody face any altitude sickness or anything or it's not high enough altitude that people will no, face no it's not altitude. high enough it's it's not high enough uh, to face any altitude no sickness okay uh, so uh, yes but you have to brace yourself for quick weather changes so okay you know uh, so we saw snowfall as well 
we saw rainfall as well uh, we saw sunlight bright sunlight also okay so all three conditions we have observed in you know uh, five days in mishmi so so you have to be prepared in those terms okay okay so that's that's i think fine meaning himalayas i think you need to be ready with that so second question on the uh, what are the option for vegetarians <laughs> a favorite question probably for many okay, people so you say rice i will answer that you say hungry <laughs> no 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 <laughs> <laughs> see the the the, uh, the 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 pork that that they serve it's only vegetarian food so pork can also be considered as vegetarian okay jokes <laughs> apart <laughs> they this they, they have dal sir they serve lentils and uh, and uh, you know aloo vegetable which is beautiful beautifully cooked so you know uh, you are your curry wala aloo ka sabzi and rice so happens to be good enough you know yeah that's and, good yeah and one more thing uh, arunachal you know these adi tribes and mishmi tribes have no culture of sweets so there is no sweet dish that's even better yes so the the best sweet dish you get over there is banana pancakes that's it you know banana pancakes wherein banana is mixed with uh, rice and syrup so you know and and no sugar added to it also and uh, you know once the infant in you know infant uh, mortality rate uh, or age is crossed in mishmi uh-huh. or in arunachal they have the highest age expectancy in india their their uh-huh. senior citizen age expectancy is 93 just because uh-huh. they they are walking all the day climbing hills going down doing hunting you know uh, uh, you know uh, no sugar as such uh, even food has very little oil Uh, so i i'll tell you one thing in namdhapa which uh, we did you know which is very typical of arunachal is uh, our forest guide took us out okay uh, and then he gave us a sample leaf and he asked us now go and look for this leaf and collect it we collected it you know 20 odd each and then this leaf was cooked in dal so we had a dal which was cooked out of you know ferns which were available within the forest uh, campus so so they they are so you know environmentally uh, uh, genius or you know so uh, literate that what to eat what not to eat they they are miles ahead of us in terms of you know those things so and one more thing you know uh, the things you should do in rowing is Uh, you should buy soap you should buy you know fruits you should buy milk powder because once you go to mayodia for four days four nights there is no electricity uh, there is no uh, mobile signals there is no uh, milk there is no bread so you have to be prepared so we used to carry you know <coughs> uh, two uh, trays of eggs for five days we carried we carried four to five breads we carried milk powder uh, you know and uh, thankfully generator was running at that point of time so two hours in evening time generator will run and you can charge your phone batteries or you can charge your uh, you know uh, camera batteries uh, that's it and then you say goodbye to the light so there is no electricity over there and uh, on temperature front one night Uh, temperature reached minus thirteen. Wow. <laughs> minus so no breathing. Man. Yes, no breathing uh, issues, no breathing problems. But uh, you know, uh, to get out of the bed even in night to take a small toilet break is a big question in your mind to do or not to do. <laughs> so, uh, Sita. I think Pawan yes. has one. Pawan, you can just go ahead and ask it. No worries. Yes, Pawan. I had a said, what's the accommodation like at this place? Uh, accommodation is pretty basic, but uh, neat and clean. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a it's a coffee house is what we call as you know. Uh, many people in Arunachal believe that it is haunted also. Okay. So. Wow. Yes. yes uh, locals believe that it is haunted but trust me uh, you know apart from me no ghost was seen there so uh, <laughs> uh, pretty basic yeah pretty basic accommodation okay uh, so 
even water uh, there is no water in taps so there will be two buckets placed in the bathroom and you have to use you know uh, those buckets water is available in ample there is no problem of on the water side but you know every time you have to fill two buckets and trust me bathing is not an option in meshmi so in five days uh, you know i was the only one who took uh, a bath for one single day okay yeah, others were least interested in doing that so bathing <laughs> so so water is not needed as well is what i'm trying to say so uh, this is it you know so uh, pretty challenging in terms of weather i would say Yeah. So, do, do you need to go with a uh, sleeping bag or something like that, no. or uh, uh, that is taken all, care of? All, all we ask participants is to carry a bed sheet, so okay. that you know. Uh, many a times, see what happens. These are very moist places. Okay. So many a times, you know, uh, your your blankets and your, you know your quilts needs to be shown, uh, you know, uh, sunlight, just to you know make the smell go away from them. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so it's not that ki these things are dirty in any terms. So what you need to do is at the most put a linen on you and then use these you know uh, the quilts and the blankets at the most. Uh, I didn't even use that because it was not at all you know in uh, that shape that it is stinking or you know giving you a, a uncomfortable thing. And uh, on an average we used to walk around 12 kilometers a day. Wow. So, so sleeping again was not an issue. So, yeah, they don't have to worry about any smells or anything as is. I think. <laughs> so as soon as you have food, everyone used to say good night. <laughs> Because again, see what happens. Again, uh, by eight eight thirty, you had your food. Okay. Uh, there is nothing to do. There is nothing at all to do. And it is so cold in night. Once we went for a, you know. Owl spotting, you know, we we wanted to get Himalayan wood owl, uh, Himalayan owl. So we we went out in the night, but to hold the torch outside the car, we had to take turns, even with gloves in hands. Wow, <laughs> crazy. Yes, but but it's fun, you know. Crazy things are fun. Yeah, no. must be. Must <laughs> be. So that what what was your bird count? Uh, I mean your bird count when you came back. One forty five plus birds we saw, you know, wow. in those seven days. Okay. So uh, perhaps one of my best because uh, Munsiari, I have always boasted of myself being the king of Munsiari. So Munsiari, we come back with around hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty. This was one forty five, and uh, many birds, you know, are. you know drop dead gorgeous birds is what uh, you know i would call them we and we missed many mind okay. you we, we we missed pretty uh, birds because of you know these rains but this happens with everyone who goes to meshmi correct two correct. days um, trust me on this two days will go in rains so you have to you'll have to plan accordingly you whatever you do planning you know 30 40% of the tour will get washed out no oh. <laughs> So that's the plan that you should have. That yes. what do you do in during that uh, rainy? So take up playing cards or chess or something like that with you, or do some so, photo editing if the yeah, electricity. Is there. You you are away from your guest house, so you you are waiting for rains to get. You oh, know that way you are safe. Yeah, oh. Okay, or or what you are doing is you are trying to go to other elevation where you can beat the clouds either high or low. so we take a u turn and you know then we go to uh, you know down to see whether clouds are there or not so it's not like it's raining in meshmi so it's raining all over the forest no so clouds come in patches and you know they they ensure that you lose good amount of time <laughs> interesting uh yes yes ma'am Yeah, sorry. Uh, one question was in terms of how do you protect your equipment there, uh, given that there are there is so much rains so, or uh, it's all very damp. So that was one question. And second was you kept mentioning that all most of these birds are uh, 
uh, very close to you. So I just wanted to understand how is it that it is so close? Uh, Normally, see, people, yeah. Yeah. So these, when when you come to the flock birds, you know, uh, the the. The, the thing about flock birds, if you stand still for some time and give them this confidence that you are doing no harm, they don't mind, you know, uh, coming pretty close to you. So these fulvetas, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, these flower peckers, you know, fire fronted, uh, fire uh, fire breasted flower pecker, uh, white tail nataj, these are all, you know, a mixed pack part, you know, mixed party hunters. So they move in a party, okay. So uh, if if one one species is comfortable with you being around, the others also become pretty comfortable. The only thing that needs to be done is you should not be wearing a flashy t-shirt like me. Uh, okay. The second thing you should not move, make any sudden movements. Please don't say wo dekho, wo dekho, pe aa gaya. Look at that. You know, just let people enjoy whatever they are seeing. Okay. Don't don't make noises. So uh, this is one of the things, uh, you know, when, when you go on a birding tour is what you learn, how to approach birds, how to make birds approach you. If you would have seen photographs of, you know, many of the senior birders, you will see they get very nice crisp close-ups. Not that they are using 800 mm lens. It's, their, it's your approach towards the bird, which is making bird feel comfortable about it. I hope this answers. Second one is your equipment protection. So uh, we always carry, you know, uh, these synthetic uh, camera covers, uh, you know, which take care of your gear, number one. Number two protection that we have, we are never away from our car by one kilometer or, you know, 500 odd meters. So our car driver is always instructed to follow us slowly and steadily. Okay. So if in case of a deluge of a rainfall, you, you run back to your car. I hope this answers. I said, uh, this is Harish here. Yes, sir. Uh, did you get to see other wildlife, like say uh, primates or uh, smaller wildlife? Uh, Hulog Gibbon, uh, we heard their calls, but they were pretty much deep inside uh, the forest. We saw yellow-throated martin uh, in mammals. Okay, uh, We saw mithuns. Now, mithuns are again, you know, cross between uh, the gores and the domesticated buffaloes. So we saw mithuns in abundance. Actually, I, I should have, you know, showed you a photograph of a mithun. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so, so we saw that, you know, and many a times people have seen clouded leopards in Mishmi, but those are only fleeting glimpses. You can't click them, Harish Bhai. You can't click them, but because these are very shy animals, and, uh, you know, tribe hunting still goes on there. So uh, they, they are very rightful in being shy to humans. Yep. Thanks, sir. Welcome. And Himalayan Cerro gets uh, seen pretty frequently in Mishmi. Okay. So uh, that is also one of the mammalian attractions which uh, Mishmi offers you. Lovely. Uh, hello, Sid. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, I wanted to know whether there is an issue of leeches, leeches there. Pardon me? Uh, is there an issue of leeches that we have in uh, uh, Western Mishmi Hansa has no the leeches? Mishmi, Mishmi, Mishmi is elevated. Mishmi has no leech problems. So once you leave Dehing Patkai kind of area, you, you, you say goodbye to leeches. Uh, great. Just one quick question uh, on any permits that might be required to get to this area of Arunachal, etc. What, uh, uh, what the document inner is? Line, yeah, inner light permit is required to, uh, you know, Shantinagar gate, a check post is the place where inner line permit can be issued, number one, or you can also apply it online. We applied it online and got it, uh, you know, so, so it was checked and we were allowed to go. So only thing that is needed is inner line permit. Uh, which is pretty, uh, you know, uh, cheap, 100 rupees per participant plus 10 rupees, 110 per person. Uh, so, related question, how far is this from China? I mean, do you get to see China border or anything? 
not really if you go to anini is the last town uh, sir anini is the last town okay so this this road is a 230 km road uh, rowing to anini okay so anini is the last town uh, roads are getting built bit from anini to the late, you know nearest bsf check post uh, mm -hmm. so most of the mishmi tribe uh, youth are employed by bro border road, okay. uh, roads border organization, roads organization yeah. okay. Uh, and, high uh, again, Anini, when I spoke about Anini, Anini is the highest altitude where Royal Bengal Tiger has been found. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Who was asking this uh, question? Hi, Rakesh here. Namaste, sir. When is your next trip? <laughs> April. Next April. <laughs> oh, hopefully, I think by then COVID would have yes. gone. And you can yes. make it. You definitely join this one. Most so thank you. Uh, is you it do? legal? Is it legal to shoot uh, four seven breasted travelers together? <laughs> I, I have not been prosecuted till now. So <laughs> I assume. Do you uh, do you pub, do you do you announce your future trips, etc. You know. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, so if you can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, you can, you can DM me also, so uh, we can remain in touch. Then I, I usually don't announce it much in public. So most of the tours are, uh, you know, as soon as they get launched, get full. So, but uh, if you can DM me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep you posted on the tour plans. Right now, everything is on hold because of this COVID trapa. Uh, as soon as this thing is gone, you know. Uh, we'll start, uh, you know, uh, torturing people with birding. Yeah, it's other way around. We'll start torturing you with requests. <laughs> He's been tired of not doing birding for a very long period of time. That too. Thanks, sir. Looking forward to that day. <laughs> Looking forward to that day. <laughs> uh, so, are you coming out with a coffee table book for Mishmi? No, 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 no coffee table book for Mishmi right now. Uh, we have to go pretty more, you know, to publish. So we published a coffee table book for Manas, but for Manas, we have been going, you know, Muzaffar has been going there for six good years, you know, twice or thrice a year. So good 18, 19 visits of five days each has resulted into that coffee table book. Uh, so for Mishmi, we need to be more dedicated for, you know, doing that. But yes, sure. Uh, that is one of the, you know, things we wish to check off. Uh, well, I think the time is up. Uh, so can I just request everyone uh, two things? Uh, one, um, we are also having paid sessions next uh, each, every Sunday. And what we are trying to do is invite our, you know, guides and drivers, uh, basically who, and forest officers as well, who basically run our forest, okay, day to day, uh, on a day to day basis and have them share their experiences. And also as a token of appreciation, whatever money that we would be getting, we would be transferring it to them uh, just for them to sustain during this COVID time. So all the paid sessions would be held on Sunday. All the free sessions would be on Saturday. Uh, if you need, if you want, we will be sending you the invite for the for both of them. Uh, I think the next session would be on next Sunday. Uh, we are planning to have one very famous guy from Tadoba. Hopefully he'll be able to join us uh, with all the technical restrictions that we have these days. And if possible, we'll be sending out an invite to you all. Okay. Uh, after that, the next next free session would be on next Sunday. That is on 29th of May. We'll be covering, I think, one more region, one more topic, another interesting one. Uh, and I think we'll see you then. So before you guys leave, can I just uh, request everyone to switch on your camera so that you know Tushar can take a good happy pick of everyone and then post it on Facebook. That is very nice. Thank you, everyone, for obliging. Hey, yes, Hello, I'm sir. doing that. Thanks. But not too many people. Oh, OK, I think I got a few more. I think you have to change the setting to large gallery. Yeah, I do. I'm doing that. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Thank you, Sid Musafar. Yeah. Nice session. Thanks. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
really nice experience thank you bye bye thank you thank you bye take care